Hey y'all, it's Sunday evening and I've been working in my garden for most of the day. So let me go show you what I've gotten done. So you can probably see my shovel sticking out of the ground down there. Well, the hole is almost nearly complete. I think I want to go a little deeper, but I am done digging for the day. But it's really close. I mean, from this point on, once I get a little bit deeper, it's going to be fairly easy to just throw the liner in, throw some dirt back in, and get those plants in there. And while I was watering this section of the garden, y'all, look what I found coming up here. There's a swamp, there's a swamp milkweed coming up right here. So I, I guess, I guess I have one here. And actually I do remember having some here, but anyway, I'm going to leave it be, let it be, let it do its thing. I did a lot of uh, watering today. We haven't had rain in so long. And look, I brought out some of my balloon milkweed that I grew from seed and I've got them in pots. There's another little one right there. Out here, we'll see how they do. And I trimmed up my wild lime because it was kind of like growing all over the place. And let me tell you, if you have any of your host plants slash shrubs that are growing right now because it's spring, but you don't quite have the butterflies laying eggs yet, now is the time to do some trimming and shaping because otherwise you're going to have to check every leaf that you trim to make sure there's no eggs on it, which I actually did. Every single little branch that I trimmed off this wild lime, I checked and no eggs. Also, now that this wild lime is contained, I've kind of cleared a little walkway through so I can come in here and around to this space. And this space used to be consumed by my papaya tree, which is now just two little stumps and I don't think it's going to grow back from them. Um, I'm not going to put another papaya tree in here because every year I have lost it and every year we're going to have some cool weather and I just, I can't, I, I just can't do that anymore. I can't. So I've got in the corner a nice wild lime and Along the fence is my twine vine, a milkweed, and then there is another little wild lime down there, and then right beside it is a Bahama Senna, and then right beside that is a Privet Senna. So I've got a lot of host plants back here that can get big in size. Then around the bend here in this section, I've got some Mexican sunflowers coming up and then this kind of empty space right on the outside of the enclosure. And I think I'm just gonna put a bunch of zinnia seeds and more Mexican sunflower seeds. There is a Biden's Alba coming up in here. I'll probably just leave it and just kind of make this a mini meadow. And if you see in the corner there is pepper grass coming up or pepper weed. And that is actually a host plant to something. I'll let you know in a minute because I don't quite recall. It is considered a weed also, but that's going to stay right there. This is going to be my mini meadow. Okay, I did my refresher plant look up. It's Virginia pepperweed. It's the host to the great southern white and the checkered white, both of which I love. And so I'm letting it be. And you know what's interesting? Like, not last season, but I think the season before, I had pepperweed coming up in my front yard. And I tried digging it back and 
digging it back. Now, that's not what I did. I dug it up and I moved it back and it didn't make it. Like it didn't like being moved. So I'm actually kind of glad that this little peppery clump grew up on this side of the fence where it's not going to get mowed. And so maybe I can get some more going back here for those butterflies. So I'll always happy to have another hose plant in the garden. So y'all, I just want to show you our viburnum bushes. You know, the ones that we trimmed down. Well, they are all blooming right now and they're so pretty. And even more interesting is wrapped all through it. And here's one here. Is Maypop Passion Vine. It is weaving all through this viburnum. It'd be a great place for it to be hidden away and to keep a little golf fritillary and zebra longwing caterpillars safe. I love it. And look, multi-use for the gorilla cart. <laughs> a lot of my aquatic plants are that are waiting patiently are sitting in here and then I just run the hose and fill it with water and so it keeps them happy. <laughs> and look at the little blooms, they're so cute. This is the water hyacinth, look at how pretty. And then look at my bird's foot. Look at this flower is still here. I still love, this tag needs to get out of the way. I still love how big the blooms are. They're so cute. And I know I told you that, you know, I wasn't going to put another papaya tree in there. I do have one. I actually have two and they're coming up together. I have them in a pot and I'm going to keep them in a pot and see what happens with them. And if they thrive, well then next winter, I can just move them into the greenhouse and keep them alive. Here it is right here. Now it looks droopy, but I just gave it a drink. It just needed some water. It'll be just fine. Hey y'all, it's um, Monday after work and one of my Eastern Black Swallowtails eat clothes and we're going to go let it fly. Um, of course, you won't be able to see because I'll have to do it with two hands. It's so hard to catch them in here, but I'll do a little video of them before I try and catch them. It looks like a female, so I said him, but I should have said her. She's beautiful. So maybe I'll get some more eggs. Yeah, I was just sitting out here talking to my husband, telling him that one of my little sulfurs was missing. It's the big one. I said, he's probably gone off to pupate. And lo and behold, I found him. Oh, there he is on his great exploration to find the perfect spot. So, he should be in his pretty little yellow chrysalis in the next day or so. And we'll have another beautiful butterfly. Hey y'all, it's Wednesday morning and I'm headed out to my garden. I know I haven't filmed or been out in my garden early morning. Marie used to come and do a morning walk through my garden. Oh, 
It's beautiful out here. And I had to stop doing that. You know why? Because it made me so sad to have to go in. I didn't want to start my day that way. Is that not awful? But now I look at how beautiful it is. And I'm just grateful to have this moment. All It's all, it's all in the way you look at things. So anyway, yesterday, y'all know I'm a fifth grade science teacher. And... Yesterday, we had a family night at our school, so I went in at my 7.30 in the morning, and I didn't leave school till 7. I was exhausted, and I had to come home and eat and do all the things that I do after work. So anyway, I asked my husband, I said, did you notice any butterflies in the um, butterfly haven enclosure and he said yes there was a eastern black swallowtail so i'm out here this morning to find it and release it because i don't want it stuck in there all day and i only have a moment so if i find it i'll try and film it for a moment for you and then i'm gonna put the camera down and catch it i see it i see it in there so that i found it already that that part is easy and i'm gonna let it fly free and then go to work Oh, y'all, can you see up there? It's a little J hanger. And then over here is, looks like a female. Females have more blue. Males have more yellow. Eastern black swallowtail. These are the ones, I've released the other one earlier, but these are the ones that hosted on the swallowtail pot plot that I planted for them. This got the little carrots in it and the, what else is in there? The fennel, there's some dill and parsley. Those are the plants of choice for their caterpillars. All right, I'm going to put the camera down. It seems very calm, so maybe I will get to film it. We'll find out. Y'all, it came over here and landed on the table. See, it's too early. Butterflies aren't up yet. So I'm going to move it over onto... Come here, booger. Come here. When they're calm like this, you can put your finger right under them, and usually they'll step right on. That's the nice thing about releasing them early in the morning is they are calm, or, you know, shortly after they've eclosed and their wings are dry, and you can get photo moments like this. I'm just going to put it right down to the flower. And as soon as its feet touch the flower, it'll start tasting the nectar because they taste with their feet. And it should be happy to stay there. There you go, beautiful. What a sweet moment. I actually do prefer releasing them when they're calm like this. What a precious way to start the day. All right, baby, enjoy it and uh, leave me some eggs. Okay, well, that was super fun. Now I gotta go to work. And man, I miss releasing them early. Now I'm thinking maybe I'll start coming out in the mornings more often and see who's out there. But like with the monarchs, they were close a little bit later. I, I don't know, I don't know. Soon it'll be summer and I'll be free. I can't wait. I'm so excited, but I'm going to enjoy the ride till then. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to go enjoy the ride to work. Hey, y'all, it's Wednesday after work, and I just got home, and I'm so tired, and I thought I'm just going to sit. And I don't know why, somehow I got the inspiration to start working on the wetland garden again. So I finished digging it out, and... Um, getting ready to lay the pond liner. Now this pond liner that I've got now is not as user friendly as the last pond liner. It's not as malleable and it doesn't bend and unfold as easily. It's very stiff. So it's been a booger to work with, but um, 
I, I mean, it's gonna do the job. It's just getting it unfolded and getting it in there. It doesn't just bend into the um, the formation, the pond formation. It's kind of like wanting to lay stiff across the whole thing. I think once I start throwing some soil in on top of it, it will start behaving and doing what it's supposed to do. And yes, my little assistant is out here. Hi, cuteness, with Ray. Hi, Ray. See what I mean? How it's not just collapsing down into the hole, but it's kind of laying across it. So I'm going to start shoveling some of the dirt back in. And that should bring it down to the bottom and start getting it formed into place. And then I'll just trim around the excess. Look at Ray showing Ringo how to dig. <laughs> They're so cute playing together. I love it. All right, I'm gonna get to work. I know this is fun to watch, isn't it? Okay, so you can see my assistant is performing the inspection and I've got the liner in, I've trimmed around the edge and filled some soil in. So I'm gonna go get the plants and bring them down and set them in for now. I'm not going to tell you about the plants, what they are, who they are, what they do, but I promise once I get them all in and situated, I will come back in a later video and do a little tour and I'll tell you about each plant, whether it's a host plant, what it does and all of that sort of thing. But for now, my goal is to just get them in because they want to be in their new wetland home. Oh, look, y'all. It looks so much better. And it's not even done yet. But just not having this big empty dirt hole in the middle of my garden anymore makes me so happy. So I have all the plants placed. I'm going to go ahead and take them out of their pots. And then I'll fill in the soil around them and water them in. Okay, you guys, it's all in. And I gave it a good watering and I love it. Look at that fish. All right, behold the wetlands garden. And like I said, I will come back and I will tell you who all these plants are at a later date, not too far off. But right now I'm kind of tired and I need to go in and eat dinner because tomorrow is another day at work. But I love, I love this space. And I love that it breaks up the traditional, my traditional cottage style butterfly garden with something different kind of right in the middle and when all of these like the the clumpy um thick green leaved plants you'll find out who they are later they get tall shoots off of them that'll be tall like the swamp hibiscus and they get like some purpley flowers and the swamp hibiscus gets this pale pink so it's just going to be beautiful and I'm excited for it.